books. So I'd go out and start looking to see if I could find any books on haunted items. And a couple of weeks later, I was with them and I said, you know, I picked up a couple of books, uh, you know, on haunted items. I said, I never realized how many there were. And he just started laughing. And again, you know, it was like, okay, with him, it was always like that. He would say or do something to pique your interest and you would go out and research it or look it up. And right. that's what ended up happening. And here I am 51 years later with a old barn full of haunted items. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my aunt and uncle, I mean, most people probably do know this, but there are probably a few people out there in the world that don't know that you are the nephew of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Yeah. yeah. And now how interesting was that? I mean, obviously growing up paranormal was basically your whole life. That's all you've ever known. Well, I'm quite well aware of it. I mean, not too many uh, kids could say it was like five of us when we were little, myself and uh, four of my cousins. We used to look forward to Ed and Lorraine coming over. Easter, Christmas, didn't matter when it was because they tell us ghost stories. Right. So we would sit around and uh, listen to the stories and it was always intriguing and interesting. Like I said, to me, I never really thought too much of it because... And not an uncle that went out chased ghosts, <laughs> so I didn't think too much of it. <laughs> so I mean, it, it it but knowing like how famous they are, well known they are nowadays. Because now, I mean, yeah, because yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, because back when they were doing the paranormal thing, there was no such thing as social media. No, and it and it, it it's it's surprising. So as well as you know Ed and Lorraine Warren now, like what would you think? What would they think of today's paranormal world? Like what 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 would would you think their stance would be? You think it would be the same, or do you think they would have just threw up their heads and go, uh, I don't know? It's hard to say, it's, because they were always out in the forefront with everything, anyways. You know, media was Ed and Lorraine. I mean, you know, they had there was a haunting or something. You know the. Papers would get involved with them, magazines, TV. So I don't quite know how they would look at it. But what I would be interested, you know, and kind of it's kind of sad is that Ed wasn't around long enough to see any of this. Right. So by the time the conjurings and everything came about, he was already gone. So, yeah. but uh, Lorraine had a chance to see one or two of them out of the towards the end. So, yeah. Um, so out of this whole like of everything that exploded about the Warrens and the movies and stuff like that and, and showcasing their, their cases, like what, what would they, would they be happy with that kind of stuff? Like to see how their cases are being portrayed in this world? I, I would assume I uh, think they'd be okay with it. <laughs> I mean, you know, here again, like I said, everybody, and it's no big secret with most people, they yeah. do whatever they want once they start making the movies, they yeah. add things, and, you know, it gets yeah. crazy. Because no one's going to want to go see a scary movie and not get scared. Everybody wants to get scared. So a lot of things end up getting changed around and moved around, and things get created to make them scary. So. Well, and I think that's just, like you said, that's the public's, like, they want to go to the movies, they want to be scared. So, of oh, course, yeah. Hollywood has to amp it up, like, a thousand times because really the cases themselves, you know, they were scary cases. Mm -hmm. I mean, they weren't being torn apart by demons and no. stuff like that. No. So we were watching your talk a little bit earlier today and you said something that always resonated with me and you talk about like these cases, but the aftercare of the cases, like the mm -hmm. clients afterwards. And I've always truly believe that you know like when you go in you solve somebody's issue case but talking to them afterwards like that that seems to me so important it is um unless a person is able to adapt to everything because it's recovery i don't care what anybody says it you know it's just like an alcoholic or a, a drug abuser they have to go through those steps of recovering and it's the same thing with uh, going through a paranormal case if it's a legit case you know so I think it's important to uh, talk to them, be able to keep in touch with them, and to try and guide them along. And if it does reach a point where, you know, you're doing that and everything, but the hauntings are still going on, something's wrong. Something's not adding up right, and sometimes you just need to pull back away from dealing with the people because 
they just don't want to let the situation go. And, and sometimes too, it's because they, I, I would say it is like an alcoholic or a drug addict. They don't change their habits. Then yeah. the, the, the problem just reoccurs over and over again. And there comes a time you have to just step back and say, well, there's nothing more I no. can do because if, you know, like anybody else, if you want the help and get the help, it's up to you to maintain the help and the, yep. and the tools that were given to them. So we, we have a mutual friend, Tim Shaw. Mm -hmm. We love our Tim Shaw here. So who doesn't love Timmy? Who? Yeah, that is so true. Who doesn't love Tim? So do you get the same reaction in your household as he gets every time he brings home a haunted object? Like, oh, no, not another one. <laughs> well, Nan, yeah, Nan, Nan's funny. I know. I know her very well, too. Um, again, Tim, you know, started doing the collecting and started, you know, ramping up on everything. And um, but he's he, more so into the um, uh, the war type things. Yes. And a lot he, his collection is it's big with a lot of the morbid stuff of uh, from the funerals and different things like that, which is cool. Yes. So he, he has a unique uh, collection and um, I don't know. My wife's so used to it. I've always done it. So I don't think there's anything unusual for me to do something like that. It'd be unusual if I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I got to ask you the question. What's the most strangest thing somebody's ever sent you in the mail that was claimed to be haunted? Uh, the, there's crazy things, there's oddball things, but there's not really anything strange because the simple fact of it is people can use items in different perspectives and use them on different levels and depending on the uh, practicing and what it was used for. I think what bothers me more than anything is when um, people start talking about their family heirlooms, you know, yeah. I'm not, I don't want grandma's five carat diamond ring engagement ring. i don't want it i really don't i have no interest in a lot of things like that so when something like that does occur and happen with a piece of jewelry or something you know uh and it's a been in a family for several generations i'll make a lot of recommendations to a person before they send it out or something that means a lot to somebody so again um i think it's important to do that before a person actually ships it to you or you know well, you know, yeah. get it blessed or cleanse it or yeah. save it, whatever you want to do to get grandma's spirit off it. But, I mean, yeah. I don't know why, because you would want grandma hanging around anyways. Grandma's not going to cause any A lot of people don't. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people. Uh, you know, the, the funniest thing is I've heard over the years from people, they go, you know, I'll say to them, well, if it's your grandmother or your aunt or somebody like that, why would that bother you? I don't, I don't want no ghost. I don't want nothing. I don't care if it's family or not. I just don't want them here. Right. So it depends on how a person looks at it, and I, I, I could, I could just, I can understand that to a little bit. So if somebody out there right now who's going to be watching this video live or later on down the road when they get home from work or something, if they were to reach, how could they reach out to you and say, John, this is what's going on with me, and give them some advice? What would be the best way they could do that? Best thing is johnsoffice dot com and. My email is on there. My phone number is on there. I mean, very acceptable. When I'm home, I usually try to get back to people. A lot of times it takes a while, but I do get back to them. <laughs> yes. Mr. Zavis is a very, very busy guy. We see him out at all these Paracons each and every week doing his lectures, which I'll tell you, folks, you, you got to sit down and listen to him talk because you you uh, just, I mean, your knowledge is, is very great. I mean, 51 years in the paranormal field. I mean, that's that goes a long way. Um, so where are you going to be next after this weekend? Well, now I go into doing my colleges and universities. Because usually they're towards the end of September and October, that's usually what I do. So I'm all over the place. And unfortunately, a lot of them are just campus activities, and it's just for the students. It's not open to the public, so don't get that opportunity to have, you know, a lot of the enthusiasts yeah. outside, you know, uh, be able to come into them. But there's a few of them out there that are open to the public, and, yeah. you know, I usually list them on my Facebook page that are open to the public and uh, tell people, hey, come on down. I'm in the neighborhood. <laughs> so when you go to these university and colleges and talk, I mean, obviously you're talking to people that have no idea about the paranormal, have known nothing about it. 
how do they usually perceive you when you start talking about the like what was the normal reaction to this? today it's a different world you will be thrown questions like you wouldn't believe you know uh years ago it used to be a big thing where people just wanting to hear about the hauntings and hear about different things now a lot of the questions they throw at you you have to remember a lot of the, these kids are already exposed to all this stuff yeah. they watch the tv shows they go to the different conventions they get involved with things so the, usually your questions and answers and things like that are a lot different today than they were just say even six or seven years ago that that is quite interesting i mean and it's only and it's only helping out the field more because yeah. you're getting you're, you're getting obviously people that are bringing different perspectives in because i know it seems like the science part of the paranormal seems to be growing a lot more needs to yeah i think that's very important because we need to be able to prove things out and get repeatability so from the scientific perspective and all the equipment and the different things that are being developed i am so much for it don't get me wrong i can't use three quarters of it i don't even know how to turn it on but i think it's important <laughs> that you know these guys are out there developing it getting it to work getting capturing things because someday i'm um, hoping we're going to be able to prove everything out so what we like to do here on the paranormal voice is ask people where is one location you've always dreamed about going but not had the opportunity to get there yet dude there's a, my bucket list is a mile long Everybody thinks, you know, after all these years, I've been to everywhere. I mean, I want to go see the pyramids. I'd uh, love to go to Greece. Uh, you know, I, I, there's so many places on my bucket list that it that it's unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. When John Zaffa says he's got a bucket list of places he's got to visit, yeah. you know there's still a lot to go on. So, Mr. Zavis, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to visit mm -hmm. us here Thanks for having me at on. the Paranormal Voice. We'll look forward to seeing you down the road. In the meantime, and in between time, folks, we like to say happy hauntings.